In this video, we are going to be creating some deep melodic techno in the style of Medusa and Eli and Fur. I'm going to do this completely from scratch, so it's not perfect, but it is cool. And you can download this project file, all the samples and presets completely free below this video. Huge shout out to my Accelerator students who have achieved some insane things this year, such as supporting Martin Garrix, touring the world as a DJ, and releasing on some of the world's biggest dance music labels. But without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, let's do it. No cuts, no edits, a one take video. First, we're going to set it to 125 BPM, a nice melodic driving tempo. Then we're going to choose a kick, a nice big fat kick drum, boom, and then program it in on every beat. Four beats, boom, 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 want you in my room. Lovely, jubbly house music. Here we go. Next thing we want to do is set up a room reverb. I know, a bit unusual, but what we've got is an auxiliary channel here, and I've just put a normal reverb on it, put a short decay time under half a second, and 100% wet because we don't want that being doubled up with the dry signal when we feed stuff to it. A little bit of a volume boost, and I've taken out the low end, and we're gonna feed some of that kick through to it. I know, I hear what you're saying. Will, reverb on the kick. Yes, reverb on the kick. Just to give it that kind of roomy presence that we want for this genre. Okay, next thing we want to do is work out our first initial bass line. And we're gonna be layering several basses in this track. So first we are gonna do a plucky bass. And as I said, this track is based on Pegasus, but I'm not gonna get it exactly right because I'm not referencing it, but we're gonna do our best. And really it's just so that you can apply similar techniques to your music. So plucky bass. And we need to name this bad boy, don't we? Okay, Pegasus, what are we gonna call it? Okay, I don't know enough about Greek mythology, so what? Pegasus, oh, you're a horse. And yet you've got wings, my mind is blown. So what I'm gonna call this is pig tail, no, <laughs> pig flippers. That would be a mythical beast and a half, wouldn't it? Pig flippers. It's done, it can't be undone. Let's get that bass on there. So I'm gonna use Serum for this. I'll use Serum for all the synths in this actually. And first thing we want to do is make it short and plucky. So I'll take the sustain down, take the decay down, hit mono, cause it's gonna be a short, sharp bass note. We don't want it kind of bleeding into the other notes. And first let's draw in the notes. We'll take it down in volume a bit so it's not too loud. Boom, let's do it. And you'll notice I'm working in 16th, that's where all the magic lies when it comes to groove. You don't need to go any higher resolution than that. And then we'll double that up. So this is our riff. Nice, already groovy. So let's make that sound actually not rubbish. Now what we need to do is just tweak it a little, a little bit, add some release. Maybe I'll take it down an octave bit bassier and then I'm going to throw one of these hyper dimensions just to widen it out like so let's take off that unison you could just use the room reverb for this as well but I wanted to show you a different way to do it today okay cool next thing we want to do is put a delay on there to get it sounding nice and spacious spacious like all basses should be bassish let's have a listen we're going to put it to knots and not notes and 16th it's been a long day guys and let's just feed in a little bit let's put it on ping pong i think that's cool next thing we want to do is get that classic melodic techno rolling bass so i'm just going to add another serum and we're gonna call this one rolling bass. And it's gonna end up being made in much of the same way as that initial serum. So in fact, we can just copy that to start with. Let's copy that instance over there. And we're gonna change a couple of things. First thing is we're gonna take off this hyper dimension. We don't want that yet. And we're gonna tighten it up by taking that release down. Now, let's just program in every on every note like this. And we want this to have a da -da 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 kind of effect. I've got another cool tip to show you with this actually that's gonna freaking blow your mind. So let's turn it down a bit, turn off that plucky bass for now. Let's make it 
shorter, like so. That's a bit more like it. Now we're going to put on a filter because we just want this to be bassy. We could add that envelope to the filter cutoff. Now what we want to do is apply this velocity control to our filter cutoff as well. And what this is going to allow us to do is add a couple of variations in our rolling bass in terms of velocity. So we're going to select them all and just bring down the velocity. And then we can just put a couple of them up and the filter is going to open up when they hit. Just to create some extra groove in our track. Check this out. Nice. Okay, now let's really fatten this up by adding some unison and some detune. It's going to really thicken this bass up. Now the trouble is we could add into some phasing issues in the low end here. So this is a very important next step. And what we're going to do, I'll just delete this channel that we already made. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call this sub bass. And what we're going to do is just keep the upper frequencies of this bass because we can add some saturation to it and really make it sound a bit fatter. So let's try that. Yeah, it sounds like the music from Commando. Oh, now that's a film. So let's take out the low end, like so. And then all of that low end is going to be taken up by this sub bass and it's going to give us extra control and balance over our low end. So let's take all the unison down. So it's just mono. I might just change it to a normal sine wave actually, that should be enough. Keep it nice and clean. Okay, now let's take out the high end because we've got that horrible clicking sound. So we'll just put an EQ after that and take out the high end. So it's just that low end power. I might add another oscillator actually, just so it's hitting a few more harmonics. So this to this. And now when we mix that with our mid bass, we've still got that lovely thick low end, but we've also got that clarity by having the mono sub bass. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is add a sidechain compressor. Compressor? We've grouped these bases together into a group, added a normal compressor, and if you hit this little button here, you've got this sidechain mode. And I'm taking the audio from this sidechain trigger, which is just a short, sharp sample that we never actually hear because I've got it set to sends only. And all that's doing is going to duck this bass, so check it out. And we'll dial it back a bit with the ratio. And it just allows that kick to pop through. That's already sounding pretty cool. Let's put that plucky bass in. Need to take out some of the high end here. Let's add an envelope. So we've layered three bases and we've got a really awesome sound already. Okay, on to the next thing on my magic list. That is a pluck bass. So we are layering up one more bass. What we want to do is really accentuate this rhythm and this melody that the bass is playing. So I'm going to duplicate this plucky bass and we're just going to find another layer to put on it. So I'm going to alter it slightly, like so. And then we'll duplicate that, but I'm going to miss this first note just to keep that groove a bit more interesting. I need to duplicate that. And what I'm going to do is just search for, in fact, now I'll create this sound. We want it to be a bit thicker and a bit more housey, if you will. So let's create something from scratch. We've already got this. Uh, we can leave hyper on actually, because that sounds pretty cool. 
So what I'm going to look for now is a wave that's got a bit more interest to it so we can start moving through the wave table. So if we add this envelope to the wavetable position on this waveform, we're going to start getting an interesting effect. I'll turn this one off first, that oscillates so we can just hear this one. Let's bring it all down an octave actually. Let's turn this down a bit. So now we've got a pretty cool house bass sound. We'll add a bit of a noise on top, which we could also feed to the filter. Although then we don't really hear it, so we'll just keep that there. Just for a little bit of extra character. Now we don't need this to have much sub bass in it because our sub bass is doing that job. So we can keep our low ends nice and clear. So it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty cool. And the last thing I want to show you with bass is a really cool trick that they don't use in this track, but I wanted to show you anyway, because I'm a gosh darn maverick. It's going to be a reverse bass, and I'm just going to use a sample for this. Sometimes it's nice to shake up, you know, between using synths or samples, because it gives more texture and timbre to the track, more variation. So I'm going to go to some bass hits. Mm. Ideally, you want them kind of tuned to something sensible, probably middle C. And that's nice, nice and rich. So what we're going to do is just use that. And this track is in C, so this is already going to be in tune. And we're just going to create a reverse bass here. So I'm going to hit R. It's going to reverse that. Now we need to shape it to our needs, like so. So it's just a little extra thing to add some rhythmic interest. And if you were being a really good boy or good girl, you could take out the low end of that reverse sound because it's going to fight with the sub bass. So audibly it won't make any difference, but the mix is going to be able to be louder and cleaner. Okay, cool. So I think we've messed around with the bass long enough. What's next thing on my magic list? Well, it says here, let me know if you're enjoying this in the comments below. Give me a hell yeah or an amen, brother, if you're feeling holy. And then we are going to get onto the drums. So fairly simple. It's all about the sound selection. So first thing we are going to do is choose a nice 16th hat to keep the groove going. Oh. Oh, I like that. Don't know what that is, but we'll use that later. <laughs> I'll just have that. Uh, so we need a cl just a simple closed hat sound. Oh, that's all a bit too fancy. I really want, oh yeah, there we go. Like an 808 hat sound. So we'll put that in our 16th hat sample, sampler, and I've just added an EQ taking out the low end by default, and another sidechain compressor so we can add some bounce to this hat. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. So first let's program it in on every 16th. Again, all the fun happens on the 16th. So let's have a listen to that. It's going to be a bit loud. Cool. But let's add some of this sidechain compression and make it bounce. <laughs> so now we can hear that side chaining on the closed hat, which is really cool. Next sound we want to get is a little shaker, I think. What about this one we found earlier? I mean, I, I know it's not like the track, but I like it, so we're having it. <laughs> so we're just going to put this in the position of every closed hat. So this is in between every kick. Boom. Boom, boom, tick, boom, tick, boom, tick. 
and then we'll turn it down a bit because it, it's got that little tone to it which I like do I? do I like it? I don't know I'm changing my mind let's turn this bit up that'll do I just moved the sample forward a bit so we've got that kind of shaker sound let's make it a bit more centralised I want something with a bit more yeah that'll do and let's make it a bit shorter yes yes so it's really important to the shape of the drums it makes a big difference we can really tighten things up now let's get a clap gotta have a clap something really short and sharp that one will do we just put this into our drum rack and turn it down a little bit and then program on every other kick, like so. I don't really like that clap sound. So what you can do in Ableton at least is you can preview different sounds as you are playing the track by hitting that hot swap mode. So we're just gonna play I like the frequencies of that snare, so I might just make that a little bit shorter. And I'm going to layer that with something. I think we need one more clap in there as well. So it's important to choose sounds that complement each other, not to just do the same thing. Maybe this one. Let's put this on there. And we're just going to layer it up quietly like so I think we'll have to tweak it because there's a lot of stuff going on here but let's listen And that next thing we want to do is add some room reverb to each of these drums. And we can see here, we've got this send control here, which is rooted to our global room reverb. And the way you do that in Ableton is you hit this IO button here, the routing button, hit the R button there for return, right click, create return chain, and then make sure to select whichever auxiliary channel you want from this drop down menu. Otherwise that reverb will be within the drum rack itself. And then we can close that back down just make sure that s is turned on and that allows us to see it so now let's feed out some of these drums and it's just going to gel everything together let's turn this tempo down not tempo pitch i want it to be a bit shorter and sharp and deeper yeah, that's better, isn't it? It's really hitting those frequencies I wanted to. Let's tighten up that room reverb a bit, a bit shorter. Okay, last thing we want to do for the drums, actually not the last thing, the penultimate thing, if you will, is find a rim shot. So I'm gonna go and find, a, oh no. I mean, that's fine basic rim shot. So we're going to use that. We just load that into our drums. Whoops. Like so. And this is going to add extra groove and just dance around the core elements that are already there. And again, all of that fun happens on those 16ths. So it's a bit loud at the moment, but that's fine because we can actually hear what we're doing. And we can just repeat that pattern. See, everything's dancing on these 16ths before or after the beat of the drum. So that's on the beat and it's just coming after it. Nice. In fact, we'll add some variation with taking down the velocity of a few of them, like so, just to add more movement and interest. And 
we'll add some room reverb to tie it in with the other drums. Nice, and let's just copy that. And we want one more drum to do little drum intros. One more clap, I think. I want a Lin drum clap. It's a good idea to know classic drum machines, actually, because then you can know in your head what you want to go for. That's the one. And this is just going to be a nice way to introduce a new part of the track. So let's just duplicate this, boom. And at the end of it, we can make a little variation on those drums. That's it. Just a little. Nice. And then we're going to have hear that double clap at the end. Oh, magic list. What have you got next? Oh, what a treat. Cool. Okay. Yes. What do we have next? Now we're going to get onto more of those melodic elements. So we've got a horn to do on this drop as well. Hmm. But before that, I want to do the classic Medusa pipe sound. So let's create our break. And this is going to really come into play a bit later when we get to the arrangement, which will be lots of fun. So what I'm going to do is just call this Medusa pipe top. This is kind of made of two different sounds I'm going to use for this, like a, a mid sound and then a bass sound. So I'll just call this Medusa low. Okay, cool. Let's just color those cyan the natural color of synths and then we are going to use a couple of serum instances again poor serum you're getting a good look in today okay i'm just going to go to uh, the medusa pipe that i made before and let's have a look at it oh that's loud isn't it well first i'll draw in the notes and then we'll examine what's going on in the patch I think that's the progression, or close enough. And then back for the loop around. And then in the lows, we are going to have a different patch, and we want this to contrary motion the top, so they kind of complement each other harmonically. Now, the easiest way to do this would just, just to use the scale mode in Ableton. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. And I've had a look at Ableton 12 and it looks even better, uh, but I'm not allowed to show any videos on that yet. So that will come shortly. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see the first stuff on Ableton 12 when it's officially released. Okay, now we need to get another one of those. Where is it? Medusa Low. Here we go. Let's just make it a bit quieter. So if we go hit scale C minor, that's the key this track is in, and then we can hit scale and it's only going to show the notes from within that scale. So it makes it really easy. So this one's going up, whereas the other one was going down. So now we have this effect. Yes. Okay, so let's have a look at this Medusa pipe and see what's going on. It's really shaping it like so with an envelope that's got a bit of decay but lots of sustain, so it's like a long note, almost like a piano note being hit. And then it's choosing the right wavetable that's going to give it the harmonics of a kind of pipe instrument almost and then we've added a little bit of noise on the top to give it some more bite and if if we go into the effects we can see we've got quite a lot going on first we've got a multi-band compressor so let's turn these effects off and then turn them on one by one because they all make a big difference so this is the sound with no effects 
Like, that's quite harsh. So we're going to compress it. That's really loud, mate. Turn on a flanger, which will soften it down. Are you sure? Because that sounds even louder. A chorus will soften it down. There we go. So that's taking out a lot of the high end straight away. Because we've got this low pass filter, which we've also got applied to this envelope. So it starts open and then closes down. And if this is a bit advanced for you, feel free to rewind and watch this as many times as you need. But we go into sound design every week on the live calls. You can ask me anything you want in the accelerator every single week, twice a week. So now let's put on the delay. Just going to make that bounce. Then some reverb to soften it down. And some EQ just to tone it up tighten it up a little bit. So that's quite a complex patch really. And then the low one is kind of similar, but I won't go through all of that because it's it's just like a brassy sound. So you've got this envelope opening up going wow, wow, wow really quickly. Wow. That's what's going to create that brass sound. But I'll do another bit of that in a few minutes because we want those brass horns for this drop anyway. So now what have we got on my magic list today? We may as well do the horns, you know. I mean, we already missed them, so let's just do it. I'm going to try and create a horn from scratch. It's probably better to just use a sample, like Kashmir will have a nice big horn sample in his sample pack. But let's just try and create something that at least does the job. So that's the root, which is the C, just a normal saw wave. So first thing we're going to do is get that shape that we just talked about. And then we're going to apply a filter to that as well, or we will apply that to a filter, a low pass filter. So now you've instantly got that kind of brassy wow sound. Let's just open up the attacker. Let's make this nice and rich now. So we're going to take it down an octave and we're already almost there, but we're going to add some unison to really thicken this up and detune it. So that's kind of how you get synth brassy sound. But what I'm going to do is really add the lower harmonic growl to this. First, I'm going to feed this noise oscillator out to the out to the filter as well. So it's also being filtered. So it's just going to add a little bit more grit to that sound. And then next thing I'm going to do is add a second oscillator and take that down another octave. And what this is going to do is just introduce the top harmonics as we feed it in. So it's going to grunge this up. But we need that to go to the filter too. So that's without it. You don't need to put this one in, but it just adds a little bit more depth to your sound. And now we need to take out the low end because we don't want this to fight with our sub bass. And that should be enough. And then we've got to put a nice big hall reverb on there. Take out the high end a bit. So this is just another reverb on an auxiliary channel. Like so. I think I might add a tiny little bit of delay there as well. So let's put the echo there. Uh, just a little bit ping pong and we'll make it. Just to make it bounce a little bit. So now we can put that brass sound on the drop. Like so. On the Keep it running and then have it fade out. It doesn't open up quick enough, I think. Let's tighten it up with the attack. Mm, less reverb, I think. That sounds pretty cool. Let's 
next thing we're going to do is look at creating the top riff. We might do the vocals in a bit, so stick around for that. So after this, we've got the dum 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 dum, which is a really cool syncopated rhythm, which we'll look at in a sec. Maybe this needs to go an octave below, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Sweet. Anyway, we'll get back to that in a sec. We are going to work on this top synth riff at the minute before we get on to the arrangement and the vocals, which is going to be a lot of fun. So let's take that sidechain trigger over there and we need to go. Oh, we are going to do top riff. What a treat. Let's get that cyan on and we are going to choose surprise, surprise, another serum. Lots of, so much is based on a saw wave. So that's it, we're done. Congratulations, we finished. So what we want to do is now make this sound a bit more interesting. How are we going to do that? First we'll shape it. I think I'll add another one, add some unison, but make it quieter. Because I, I don't want to lose too much of that quite clean tinniness. I might see if there's another, is there another um, kind of shape wave that's going to sound good? I don't know. I mean, this one's good already, isn't it? I mean, Let's just see if there's a couple. No. That's pretty cool. Let's make that one unison-y. Yeah. I like that. That sounds pretty cool. So now let's add some reverb to that and some delay. Again, we're just going to put a delay on the channel for speed. We're going to choose notes and 16ths again, ping pong delay. Let's add some more bite to this sound. A noise oscillator. But we're going to choose a different sound, I think. Um, what could we go for? Let's just listen to some of these. Track it to the... White was kind of cool, wasn't it? That's kind of what you do in Future Rave as well, and that just gives it a nice little bit of bite, then a touch of high end if we want. That's cool. Okay, let's program it in. Let's play it in, in fact. So what's happening with this riff in terms of timing is that it is syncopated and it's partly a polyrhythm. Now, let me just quantize it. Whoops, nice quantizing. Okay. So I have to tighten it up. Why is that not on in time? Hmm. Oh, okay. I love the way that first note just kind of comes in just before the beat, just drives things forwards. And on this riff, later on in the track, this is going to be layered with a string sound, which is, again, just going to add more richness to the track. And that's something that the Medusa is fantastic at, just making a track that's so full of nuance, but that has relatively few main melodic ideas, but they're just layered and processed very carefully to make it sound really, really full without overcomplicating the track. So let's call this top strings. I mean, that could be said of any really good producer. 
for sure. So what we're going to do with this one is going to put a string on there. Now I don't know where to find a string, so I'm just going to go to, um, let's go to strings. I'm just going to use an Ableton pack. Staccato, perfect. That's what we need. Just what the doctor ordered. Thanks, doc. Top docmanship. Now let's listen to it. Okay, these need to be a little bit longer because I think some of these notes are getting lost and we'll make them all the same velocity. Yes, yes. Anyone that po posts the comment, top documentship in the comments below, that tells me that you've watched this far and that you're still listening to me witter on. And if you do that, I will love you forever and you also win the internet today. So just let that be known. Okay, let's add a little bit of sidechain compression to those. Too much. We just want a gentle bounce on these. Yes, loving that. Uh, let's bring the... Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to add to the drums as well. I wanted to add... Oh, what's it called? I wanted to add some... A shaker loop. That's the one. Yeah, we can use that because it's got lots of nice high end sizzle in it. We don't need anything apart from that first sound. I don't like that click, so we'll take that off. Now we can loop this, and this is just going to add some real sizzle to our drums. I should probably put this where all the other drums are actually. So this is, you know, quite in depth layering that we're going through on this. And then I'm going to add another sidechain compressor because we need it to bounce in time, much like the 16th hats were doing. So now it sounds like this. Let's make it bounce more. We'll make this quieter and just play it with our drums and bring it in slightly. Hear that difference? The extra high-end energy that brings. Let's tweak this serum a bit. I want that to be a, a bit more prominent. That's cool. Okay, now we're gonna get to the break and then we'll build into the drop. Who needs the girls? Build up. No, 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 get out, taxi, taxi, take him away. Let's make that build up properly. So, imagine this, if you will. So it's building up with a snare. Okay, but now we need the bass to come in on that drop, obviously, because it's an anti-climax, right? So let's just... That comes in later, though. And then we're gonna... Oh, we can do the bass progression in a sec. And then here, it's going to go down and do the progression. Again, all in the same key. So. 
whoops, needs to be twice as long as that. Much like the just mirroring the baseline that we had with these Medusa Low in the break. So it's not doing something new, it's just the same notes, but now we're bringing it to the drop section. So if we repeat that with the sub bass as well, because they have to be the same, these notes here, these motifs should work on top of these. No, they don't. So. So I'm just tweaking those notes in the bass riffs as well, so it follows our rolling line. There we go. Whoops, but then it goes down at the bottom, doesn't it? Back to the A sharp, and same on this one. Bear with me, guys, bear with me. We might leave that reverse bass as it is. Now, this riff is going to work with that changing bass line, and that's the beauty of this, okay? So we're gonna go. So it's kind of like this. Except we'll have the bass follow that as well. Ah, oh, okay. I, I will be finishing soon, guys. Honestly, but I'll find some vocals because I promised I would. But I'm just going to put this brass sound there as well, and that's going to follow. That's going to follow follow it too, and that's going to get epic. So let's bring these drums in here. This is what happens. See, I get excited by the end of it. We'll bring some drums in beforehand, but not the claps, just the hats, and that's going to build the tension. There we go. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Whoops. This is what happens when you try and do it all too quickly, but it's all about getting a groove going quickly. Okay, let's get some vocals on this. Now, I might have to log into Splice. It wasn't working. It's really annoying when stuff logs out, so let's fast forward this bit. This is the only edit I'm doing, okay? Okay, so we have a splice. I'm gonna do female vocals, and I'm gonna go do 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 female key C minor, like so. So let's loop this track and just listen to some vocals whilst it's playing. Like a train, mate. No. I mean, it's nice, but I want something. Yes, yes. Yes, just yes. I know it's not quite Eli and Fur, but you know what? It's gonna do the job for the for this exercise. So we've downloaded it. Let's drag it in there and make sure it's synced. So we can see here it says 123 BPM at the top. So we go in there, we can see it's warped incorrectly. Naughty vocals. So now we're gonna warp it, Complex Pro, and write 123, boom. And now it's gonna be in sync with our track, he hopes. So let's go to the break and introduce these vocals. Color them purple, natural color of the human throat. And let's do it. This is turning out to be quite long actually, this one, but I love it. It's good fun, right? I hope you're having fun. Please be having fun. <laughs> nice. Du, 
That's already getting in terms of snares. Let's add some more. Mixing it a little bit. Take out the kick. Add the extra effects. Okay, loop that round, add the vocals back in, take that top riff up. Yes! But we need more drums and other layers in this too. As I said guys, there's a lot more to do to this track, but I think we did a pretty good start in it. So as usual, you can download it below this video. And if you want to jump on calls each week, asking questions about sound design, mixing, getting your music sounding professional as quickly as possible, you know what I'm trying to say. There's a link below. Look at it if you want. If you don't, fair enough. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Check out this video here. I don't know what I'm going to post there, but it's going to be related to this one. And if you enjoyed this, this one's going to build on what we touched upon today. Catch you over there. And remember, you're a legend.